Hello everyone, Flaghead here. Recently, I noticed a lot of my videos aren't doing as well as they used to. For those of you currently watching the content I put out regularly, I thank you. It's amazing to see the support people give my content. If you are new to the channel, please consider giving that little red button down there a click and ring the bell. Now, in this video, I wanted to prepare for the upcoming part 4 of the Minecraft Survival Series with a time-lapse build. It wouldn't really be all that interesting if I just talked over the build or sped up my character building it. That's why I decided to make this little time-lapse of me building my side project as a form of warm-up. The building I'm constructing was the first one of the day, and I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do with it. So later on, it got scrapped, along with the second building I made off-camera. The building was a, using a very simple and bland color palette that I did not like the look of, especially one, for one of the buildings next to the castle, which I'll go over in a later video. The next building I already had a plan for. I wanted to settle it deep into the mountain face, and from there I just got to building. I wanted this build to have a sort of claustrophobic feel to it, with everything you could possibly need crammed into the interior as much as possible. It was pretty early on when I decided one floor wouldn't work, so I made several. I had to dig deeper into the mountain face in order to create the planned size of this compressed little apartment. By now, I wanted to begin working on the roof of the first floor. Originally, I had plans to make it an A roof, however, I quickly came to the realization that it just wasn't going to allow me to do that. So after a complete scrapping of the roof system, I began designing a much flatter design. I began by flattening the roof by using a brick palette of mostly slabs and stairs instead of solid blocks, while also keeping that rugged and classic design to the roof. Upon completion, it felt too blocky, so I chipped away at the front, as if the weather had gotten to it. By this point, it looked well made, so I kept the design. The exterior was almost done. After struggling way too much at the front door, it is time for me to build the second story roof. Bringing back the A roof design I originally intended, the clip explains it all. The old weather materials, which you wouldn't usually see in a mountain town. There isn't that much to go over that I are already covered. At last, it was finally time for the interior. Starting off with some lights, I began making my way up to the top of the building, creating little platforms for the resident to live on with enough space to walk around freely. With the roofs finally done, I could begin digging my way through the mountainside with little caution, layering brick layers one after another. First, I had to reach the roof before I could begin really filling any errors I had forgotten along the way. Finally, we finished the exterior of the building with the roofing. With the climb of the building's interior, we began applying light fixtures across the build before building a large staircase up with multiple platforms to live on. Of course, the resident needs a place to sleep, so we build him a bed, a desk, and a lamp. Finally, we begin with the bottom layer, which will have a study room at the back of the room, along with bookshelves for our resident to read. Using a loom as a form of empty bookshelf, we complete the build. Lastly, for this mountain edge cabin is the most important part, creating the exterior mountain face which will cover the side. Using stone as its base plate, we use glass blocks. Once the grass is placed, gravel is an excellent choice for rocky edges. Of course, any building is incomplete without any windows. With the apartment done and the mountain fixed up, it's time to wrap up the project with a little bow. Or, door. Once I realized how poor these two buildings were built, I tore them down for extra space for the next part of the build. Beginning the next building by moving the road a small bit, I began by measuring up an exterior wall for the first floor using stone bricks. A s using a similar block palette as the second building, I began working on a not too complicated structure the purpose of which is still unknown. Due to this being so close to the castle, the building could have some form of significance to the castle's defenses. Or I might just tear it down later. With the arches in place, I began layering the structure's bricks and the second floor's beams before adding an extruding section of the building, finishing the building's first floor by layering the bricks.
With the second floor, I began attempting something I've never done before, using a mix of sandstone of oak, which is soon replaced for smooth sandstone and spruce. I began creating the second floor's walls, making them 3x3 three three wide and tall. Next up is the floor. After several attempts at an idea, I dug out the dirt to make way for the floor. Personal preference took a hold of me as I began using spruce planks as a floor tile, using stripped log and dark oak wood slabs for a spiraling staircase. Of course, I also had to apply a second story to this build which I did happily, using a very insufficient method. By this point, I was more winging the design, settling on dark oak wood stairs for the roof. I wasn't going for first prize, especially with the roof design. When building, it's best to try new things, and if they don't work, tear everything down and replace it with a better building later. At least that's what I always say. Next up is the spruce trap doors, which make an excellent window cover. Here you can see me being a klutz as usual, before getting back to work on the exterior. Lastly, the roof is finished one layer at a time. Simple, uninspired, and dull at best. With the last building constructed, Let's see how this build looks in survival. There's not a lot, and that's fine. Perhaps for a later part, I'll work on creating more town pieces here and there. For the last build of the episode, I wanted to design a form of dirt-poor housing using a very basic palette of cobble and gravel, as to look like it was designed far before the rest of the town was founded. A monument to the city's history, if you will. Adding a dark oak wood roofing as if it was renovated for those who can't afford the small, cramped apartments around them. Before this video ends, I want to thank everyone who's made it to the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all Friday. Goodbye!